Hey guys, this is David from Team Oven, coming to you guys with my Dark Lord deck profile. So I just got back from a tournament at Card Addiction, and uh, I was able to go undefeated. Um, I split with the other undefeated in the last round, and um, I was able to get some OTS packs, pull the Grand Pulse, um, so that was pretty cool, but this deck is phenomenal. Like, this deck is so so good it could go first or second it doesn't matter the way i built it, it it just powers through anything that's in your way it like i have outs in my main deck like it's just so strong because you're able to turbo through so fast and get your plays through and it's just like it's super hard to deal with and no one knows how to play against this and it, it is actually super hard to play against this and especially and then Especially when you drop like a Vannies or a Chrissia, anything like that, and you're able to protect it, that's just like GG. So, yeah, so starting off, I play three Ixchel. Uh, best card in the deck. This is your draw power. You're playing like so many just effects that say draw two, draw two. This is one of them. And they all have, um, most of them have the on-field effect to pay a thousand to copy a spell or trap. And that's, that just lets you abuse multiple effects per spell or trap each turn. Um, I'm playing three Dark Lord Superbia. Superbia is uh, uh, the combo piece because you summon this off of contact. And then uh, summon Ixchel or any of the other ones from the grave. And it's also level 8, so you could uh, use it as a trade-in target. Uh, for this tournament, I played two Nastin. Um, I want to get my third one. I wasn't able to get it for the tournament, but it wasn't. It didn't affect it at all if I had the third or not. Um, in place of the third, I'm playing a second uh, Pegasus. Um, this card's still good. This lets you uh, manipulate the amount of fairies you have so you could actually summon Chrissia the correct like how it's supposed to be summoned versus either bringing it back from the grave or tributing it tribute summoning it and then for the last two dark lords I'm playing one of this guy um he's all right he's probably the he's the worst one but uh he can come in clutch to protect your field sometimes if uh you know people are like people are going to be signing in dark hole and regeki for this deck and it does hurt, but this helps like counter that. And also, uh, Dark Lord Zerato. Um, this wins games a lot. You but you can only play one of it. Uh, just rejecting your opponent is always always good. And then for my free win cards, I'm playing a uh, two Chrissia and one Vanity Fiend. So a lot of people are playing a lot more. But in testing, like, I, I've been testing this one, this deck for a while as well. And I just, I would find myself breaking too much if I'm playing multiple copies of Vanity's Fiend or, or Christia. Christia is a little bit, you could play probably more of this just because uh, it's a trade-in target and also you could bring it back with Superbia. And it's able to special summon itself. So it's just all around, like, synergizes way better than Vanity's Fiend. But, um... I'm just playing these three because I'm I'd rather play Dark Lord the deck and then have this as an added like just GG versus trying to turbo through only playing this and then they summon eccentric pop in and then you don't have like any follow up plays after that so I think it's just the correct way to play this deck is to play how it's supposed to be played and then just have this as like an added like I just won the game if I have this and you're able to turbo through the deck fast enough to be able to get to these cards so you only really need three and I'm saying a second Vanny's Fiend because um, I want to play if I know if I'm guaranteed to go first because this card's not that great going second so um, I'm make, main decking uh, two Gamma Seal. Uh, Gamma Seal <laughs> outs everything it's it's perfect it's a level A so trade-ins always live um, it, it's just like one of the best like outs to anything annoying and two of my techs that I'm main decking are Danko Seka. This wins games like absolutely destroys Metal Foe and any other deck like that like this wins games so much and no one expects it game one and you're able to afford to play this card just because you rarely use your normal summon 
and so metal foes metal foes can't even activate their scale effects while this card is on because it says you can't set so this card is just phenomenal against the meta right now and also some things that I like find myself doing is I could search the Regeki break set the Regeki break then summon this so if they have the out with ex uh, Archfiend Eccentric, I could Regeki break them, and then once the trap is off the field, then this becomes live again, they still can't set. So uh, Dinko is definitely worth playing main deck. It just wins so many games. That you summon it, you, they can't strike you, your effects go off, you're able to draw and summon, and you just win from there. Now for the spells. I'm playing three Banishment, best card in the deck. It searches all of the other cards, and you could activate the effect from the Grave too, so you're basically searching twice per turn. Dark Lord uh, Contact is one of the main ways you bring out the rest of your Dark Lords, and you're able, again, like just shuffling them back with the on-field effects. So you summon this, summon Superbia, summon Ixchel. If you have like other ones, you just Ixchel effects to bring out the other ones and use them. Like, it's just, it's just, this deck's so free, it's it's insane. Three trading. Um, and there's so many different tar level 8 targets that it's, oh, this one's always going to be live. And then we're playing three Lord Darkness. Again, it's always going to be live. It's, this deck just draws way too much. Two Pod Desires. Now, I'm only playing two because... If you're playing three, you're gonna dead draw the other ones because you go through your deck that fast. And you're gonna see all, all like you're gonna go through half your deck at least within the first two turns. So playing three would be too much. And then for my last one of spells, uh, I'm playing Rikeki, which can out a lot of things. One copy of Twin Twisters because you don't want to lose to the floodgates, and so you're able to dig through your deck till you're able to get this. And discarding like dead. Uh, like you could discard spell or traps from like Dark Lord spell or traps, and it will like you can still use them in the grave, so it's not too bad if you discard them. And then this card's ridiculous, and then an upstart. And then just for the traps, I'm playing three, uh, two rebellion and one enchantment. Uh, rebellion's the one that you're gonna be searching the most. Uh, you abuse rebellion like crazy. You could regek. I just call it regek your break because that's essentially what it is. You got. You could also send Dark Lords on field, for the cost, which is even better, and it's searchable. And you could Regeki break like three times, uh, like in one turn. So that's insane. So that was it for the main deck, and for the extra deck. Um, I, I didn't even go into my extra deck. Like, it's. You have so much free space with the extra deck. Um, it's kind of like up to you, like what you want to, what you think is the best. But I'm just playing the ones that you go into the most are eights. So the Galaxy Dragon package right here. Um, never, I again, like I never went into this this whole tournament. Like I did not. There was there was five rounds. There were like five six rounds. Like I never went to any anything in my extra deck. So, it's all up to what you think would be the best. Um, Felgrand, Titanic, best like control cards. Um, some sevens, Draco Sack, Flare Metal. You could take their fours, so just stuff to overlay with your Dinko, I guess. Like honestly, it could just be like whatever. Main deck, uh, Cherries outs. I mean Cherries, sorry. Main deck like Cherries targets. Um, you could <laughs> you could steal uh, tree toad heroes. Um, you could steal their Bahamut and then summon your own tree toad. Like it, that's not gonna happen. But like you don't even really need your extra so you can main these obviously. Um, and then side deck still three cherries, uh, two maxi. Here's the second vanity's fiend, and then this card I sign in almost all the time puts in so much work is side blocker again you rarely use your normal summons so you're able to play cards like these that are just like blowouts i was able to call i faced a mirror match today and i called vanity's fiend and i was able to just turn them off for a turn 
go off and then just it it just lets you keep playing over stupid like side card outs or just vanities fiends and things like that in general two sets some downs the second and twister then if i'm going first the barriers and anti-spell fragrance so this is definitely going to be one of the best decks in my opinion um, I already think it's gonna it's already a top tier contending uh, I was able to, I uh, today I beat BA um, ABC blue eyes uh, metal foe like I I, th I can't even remember right now it's kind of late but there were so many like I faced one of every single deck I was still able another dark glory player like I was able to face so many different decks and still be able to be I 2 0 almost every opponent. Um, the only opponent that I didn't 2 0, uh, they opened like Vanny's Epinus first game and I wasn't able to out it. But like, other than that, this deck is like extremely, extremely powerful. I definitely recommend if you can to try to pick this up because this is a scary, fast, strong deck that can control and just outpace your opponent like in two turns. The game's over in two turns with this deck. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, just let me know if you have any comments on the deck, anything I should change. And just let me know if there's anything else. And we'll be coming to you guys with more content. This is David signing out.